Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Jeskai Fires of Invention deck built around the powerful 4 mana enchantment from Throne of Eldraine, Fires of Invention, which has a lot of different uh, abilities so let's read through them here so we can cast spells only during our turn and we can cast no more than two spells each turn so that sounds like a pretty big drawback not being able to play stuff at instant speed during the opponent's turn and only casting two spells per turn but the upside here is that we can cast spells with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of lands we control without paying their mana costs and in Magic, whenever you get to play stuff for free, you should pay attention because those cards tend to be pretty good. So one way to potentially evaluate Fires of Invention is a way to triple your mana if you can make use of every last bit of value. Since, of course, once you start casting spells for free, imagine you play your Fires of Invention on turn 4, then turn 5. You can cast two 5-drops for free, so that's 10 mana worth of cards. And then if you also have some sort of mana sink to make use of your 5 untapped lands, then you'll have used 15 mana worth of cards on turn 5, which, you know, is quite powerful and will eventually win you the game. And uh, that's kind of what this deck is all about. It's about maximizing the value you can get with Fires of Invention, including having a lot of mana sinks, so you can still use your mana while casting spells for free. And the best mana sink I've been able to find is Kenrith the Returned King, which kind of started out as a meme, since this looks like a card that would be good in a commander deck, kind of for casual play. But if you compare Kenrith to the alternative, which would be Cavalier of Flames, which is the other powerful mana sink you could play in a Fires of Invention deck, Kenrith actually compares quite favorably to the Cavalier for a couple of reasons. So first off, Kenrith comes into play as a 5-5 that we can give haste for just a single red mana. And besides haste, Kenrith also gains trample, so it can trample over some chum blockers to maybe pressure opposing planeswalkers. And the reason that one mana difference between the Cavalier is quite relevant is for the situation where you don't have the Fires of Invention on turn 4, but maybe on turn 4 cast Drawn from Dreams, find the Fires of Invention, and then on turn 5 you can cast Fires of Invention, but you'll have spent, of course, 4 mana to cast it. You can still play your Kenrith for free, but now you only have 1 mana to still use an activated abilities, which is just enough to give Kenrith haste and trample, whereas if this card is a cavalier, we're going to be unable to do so. Another reason I like Kenrith quite a bit is that if we're playing against an opposing Narset, which prevents card draw during our turn, if we play Cavalier, we can't really discard cards to draw cards, because Narset is going to prevent that. Whereas Kenrith, for 4 mana, lets target player draw a card at instant speed, which means we can also use this during the opponent's turn. While Fires of Invention prevents us from casting spells during the opponent's turn, we can still use activated abilities during the opponent's turn, which means we can kind of circumvent Narset's static ability a little bit, so we can still make sure we can draw some extra cards. And then the major reason I like Enrith so much in this type of deck is the white ability. For 3 mana, target player gains 5 life. We can pretty easily get up to 6 mana. We often want to get up to 6 mana since we have a lot of sideboard cards, which I'll get to in a second, that we want to be able to search up and cast thanks to our Fires of Invention. So getting to 6 mana and getting to double activate the ability to gain 5 life is very important since we are a control deck after all and control decks just need to make sure they can stay alive long enough and eventually their powerful late game will take over. So being able to gain 10 life per turn against aggressive decks and mid-range decks is super valuable and will often make the difference and uh, Cavalier just doesn't offer that flexibility. So while Cavalier has some upsides and can potentially be more powerful in more creature-focused deck, I found Kenrith to be very powerful, even though it is legendary and we can only have one in play at the same time. And all these different activated abilities make it so we can get maximum value out of our Fires of Invention by still using our lands, even though we can only cast two spells per turn. So that's one of the main ideas behind the deck. And then the other big part of the deck is Fey of Wishes, which is a two mana, one for flyer that we can also return back to our hand. But I put it in the four drop slot since more often than not, we're going to use the granted adventure ability on Fey of Wishes 
to choose a non-creature card we own from outside the game, reveal it and put it into our hand. And in terms of uh, standard, that means we get to search our 15 card sideboard for any non-creature card and put it into our hand. Since this deck is built for best of one, that means we get a very wide selection of one-off non-creature cards that we can search up with the Fae of Wishes. So we can uh, use those cards in different situations to help us out. And of course, thanks to Fires of Invention letting us cast spells for free, we don't need to worry about colored mana requirements, and we can even play some green or black cards, even though our mana doesn't usually let us cast those. So that's another big part of the deck. So yeah, let me go over the entire deck here, starting out with our one drops, where we have one copy of Bag of Holding, a nice little way to draw and discard some cards. So in the matchups where, for example, our sweeper effects like Deafening Clarion, Time Wipe, aren't too effective, we can simply get rid of those and maybe find something better. We can get rid of extra lands or help us find lands if we need them. And another nice synergy with Bag of Holding is Fae of Wishes, because Fae of Wishes for two mana, we can discard two cards to return Fae of Wishes to its owner's hand. So we can use the Adventure Mode once again, which is quite powerful. And if we discard two cards with a Bag of Holding, they will get exiled instead, so we can later get them back. And if we happen to be playing against a Thought Erasure discard-heavy deck, then it's always nice to have the bag in play. Only one copy, since it can be awkward against opposing the fairies bouncing the bag, because then we'll lose all the cards in exile. And it's also not the best against Oko, that can turn it into a 3-3 Alk, but it's still a nice one-off to have in a deck. Then at 2 mana, we've got the full playset of Shimmer of Possibility, a sorcery that lets us take a look at the top 4 cards of our library, put one of them into our hand and the rest on the bottom. So we're playing this over Anticipate, since the Fires of Invention of course doesn't let us cast spells at instant speed, we're not trying to keep up counter spells, so digging one card deeper with Shimmer is just better than the Anticipate would be. And I find the Shimmer to just dig us a little bit deeper than a card like Opt, even though it's a bit more expensive, we're not really doing much on turn 2 anyway, so I don't mind spending the extra mana to dig a bit deeper to make sure we can find the Fires of Invention and uh, get things going. And then we also have two copies of Bonecrusher Giant. The Adventure Stomp at two mana lets us deal two damage to any target, and this damage also cannot be prevented. And then later we can also get the creature, three mana for a 4-3, that has some other text. But for the most part we're using the Stomp side, and then in the late game we might cast a Giant, maybe give it haste right away with Kenrith to get in there, maybe finish off some Planeswalker or just close out the game. So having these random creatures in the deck is quite nice, especially these Adventure creatures, since we have uh, three copies of Time Wipe, which lets us return adventure creatures back to our hand, so we can reuse the adventure afterwards. So Time Wipe plus Fae of Wishes, Bone Crusher Giant, and a Realm Cloak Giant is a pretty nice combo as well. Then at three mana, we've got the full playset of Teferi Time Raveler, just as a way to slow down the opponent and draw some extra cards. This is the only card in the deck that uh, runs straight into Narset, not letting us draw extra cards, because every other card draw effect is not really a card draw effect, or we can activate it at instant speed during the opponent's turn to circumvent Narset. So Teferi is the one card that uh, does get got by Narset, but otherwise just a, a very powerful card, as you all know by now, and very powerful against the blue-green flash decks with a lot of counter spells, which otherwise are pretty tough to beat with this kind of strategy, so the fairy helps out there as well. And then we have three copies of Deafening Clarion. We are a control deck, we will need some sweepers to make sure we can fend off early creatures and survive long enough to pull off all our shenanigans, and Deafening Clarion is great. We can even often use the lifelink mode in combination with a creature like Kenrith that can come down with haste and attack right away and gain even more life thanks to the Deafening Clarion granting lifelink. And then at 4 mana, of course, we've got a full playset of Fires of Invention. At some point, I did have one Fires of Invention in the sideboard, so we could search it up with the Fae of Wishes if we were unlucky not to find the Fires of Invention right away. But I found that to be maybe a little bit too slow in some matchups, and I would rather just maximize the possibility of drawing the Fires of Invention naturally, instead of having to first wish for it with the Fae of Wishes, even though that does make the deck a little bit more consistent, but it just slows it down a little bit too much. Then we also have the full playset of Drawn from Dreams, a very powerful 4-mana play we can make after playing the Fires of Invention on turn 4. Let's just take a look at the top 7 cards, put two of them into our hand and the rest on the bottom, so it can find us whatever we need. And then the full playset of Fae of Wishes, so now let's go over the sideboard maybe. 
So in the sideboard we've got a lot of different options and the sideboard is kind of changing constantly based on what decks I encounter and what uh, cards I want to try out. But right now I have one copy of Ashok which is great against graveyard strategies or ramp strategies trying to search up lands from their deck which Ashok can prevent and every now and then against a control matchup you might end up uh, in a scenario where Ashok can just mill the opponent out to win the game if uh, the creatures aren't getting the job done. Then we also have one copy of Unmoored Ego, mainly to name Field of the Dead against the Golos ramp decks, since there's not many ways to interact with Field of the Dead, and if we can Unmoored Ego before the opponent gets too many copies of Field of the Dead in play, that can be an effective way to prevent that. And uh, even if they do get one copy on play, we can still potentially beat one zombie or a couple zombies per turn. But of course, once they get two or three copies of Field of the Dead in play, the Unmoored Ego is not going to do much, and we'll need to find a different solution. Then we also have one copy of True Love's Kiss as a cheap disenchant effect that also draws a card. So if we only have four mana and don't have access to our more expensive cards, we can still get the True Love's Kiss to maybe destroy an opposing, Fires of Invention, and also draw a card. Then we've got one copy of Shared Summons, which is probably the signboard card I search up the most, and is a good default card to search up with the Fae of Wishes. As a 5 mana instant, that lets us search our library for up to two creature cards with different names, reveal them and put them in our hand. So we will often search up one copy of Kenrith and a second copy of Fae of Wishes, so we can wish for something else on the following turn if we want to. And then we can potentially even play Kenrith right away, give it haste and attack and do some other things. So turn 4, Fires of Invention, into Fae of Wishes for Shared Summons, and then turn 5, Shared Summons, into Kenrith plus Fae of Wishes, play Kenrith, activate Kenrith, maybe draw some cards as well, is uh, kind of the ideal sequence for the deck. Then we also have a fourth copy of Time Wipe, three in the main, one in the sideboard. We've got a Planar Cleansing if we need to clean up the entire board, including maybe our own Fires of Invention, but it's always nice to have that option. Then we also have Commander Dreadhorde, since we do have Kenrith that can potentially gain a ton of life and offset the life loss from Commander Dreadhorde, which can steal a bunch of creatures or planeswalkers from all the graveyards and put them to good use. Then we also have a Liliana Dreadhorde General, which could be good in some situations where the opponent has two large creatures that you need to get rid of and might line up slightly better than some of your other cards. So it's just nice to have a lot of options, especially in best of one where you don't need a signboard for anything else. Then we have Thought Distortion as a very powerful discard effect that can make the opponent reveal their hand, exile all non-creature, non-land cards from their hand, and a graveyard as well, and cannot be countered for what it's worth. So this is great against any combo or control deck. I've brought this in a few times against the uh, Grixis version of Fires of Invention and gotten a nice 6 for 1. I've also brought this in against the Dance of the Man's Esper deck, where they have a lot of uh, non-creature spells as well that we can make them discard. So just a very nice tool to have, and I've definitely searched it up a few times. Then we've got Chandra Awakened Inferno, one copy in the main deck, one copy in the sideboard, as a powerful planeswalker that can double up as a sweeper effect, also uncounterable, so sometimes if you can resolve the adventure from Fae of Wishes, you can grab an uncounterable spell in the sideboard and make sure it resolves. Then we have a Casualties of War, which is a pretty fun one, as a way to destroy an artifact, creature, enchantment, land, and planeswalker all at the same time potentially, so it can be quite a blowout, and if the stars align, can be a 5 for 1. Then we also have an Ugin, the Ineffable, which can also potentially destroy opposing enchantments and colored artifacts, like the new cycle of legendary artifacts, for example, including the Great Henge. Ugin can also take care of, and sometimes it might be better than searching up uh, Casualties of War. And the nice thing about some of these 6-mana Planeswalkers like Ugin and Chandra is that we can potentially still cast them even without the Fires of Invention in play. So if we don't have the Fires, we can still Fae of Wishes for a powerful 6-mana Planeswalker that can potentially help us win the game. And then last but not least, we've got Plain White Celebration as a 7-mana spell that in a pinch we can use to gain a ton of life if we don't have a Kenrith in play, can make some tokens to chum block with, or simply return powerful permanents from our graveyard back to our hand. And then we also have an Overgrown Tomb, since Fae of Wishes doesn't prevent you from getting lands out of the sideboard, so having an extra land to search up if you're stuck on 4 or 5 lands can be useful. And the reason we're getting an Overgrown Tomb is so we can potentially also use the green or black abilities on Kenrith. So that's a nice little bonus that the Overgrown Tomb provides, letting us reanimate creatures and potentially put some plus one plus one counters on our creatures as well. 
Then going back to the main deck, of course, we've got three copies of Kenrith, which is the MVP in the deck alongside Fires of Invention. Then we've got three copies of Time Wipe as a powerful sweeper effect that also lets us return a creature back to our hand, which is great in combination with the adventure creatures. So we can, for example, have a Fae of Wishes in play as a 1-4 creature after using the adventure first, and then instead of having to discard two cards to return the Fae of Wishes to our hand, we can simply cast Time Wipe and pick it back up. And then we also have a one-off copy of a Realm Cloaked Giant as another sweeper effect, with the adventure destroying all non-giant creatures, and then afterwards getting access to a 7-7 Vigilance, which, especially in combination with Kenrith giving it haste, can do a lot of damage. And it's also nice that it's a creature that we can search up with our... Uh, shared summons out of the sideboard, since sometimes we won't have a sweeper, but we'll be able to search up the Realm Cloak Giant with a shared summons, and then still get access to a sweeper in creature form, so that's also nice, and of course, if we cast a giant, we can maybe pick it back up with a time wipe to get access to even more sweeper effects, if that's what the matchup requires. And then last but not least, one copy of Chandra Awaken Inferno as another sweeper that can also help us close. And then looking at the mana base, we've got of course four copies of Fabled Passage in a three-color deck and plenty of basics to go with it. So we've got two planes, three islands and one mountain. And then the rest of the mana base includes four copies of Temple of Triumph, since we're not often casting stuff on turn one. So playing a tapped Temple of Triumph and getting the scry one value is actually quite nice, since we are a deck that needs to find the Fires of Invention consistently. Then we also have some Shocklands, two Sacred Foundries, four Steam Vents, four Hallowed Fountains, and then another nice Mana Sink that we can use if we have a Fires of Invention in play is Castle Ventress, letting us scry two, so we can maybe put a stop on our upkeep and then before taking our draw step, use the Castle Ventress to scry two to improve our draw step and make sure we keep drawing action. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand seems okay, even though we don't have the Fires of Invention. I have a Bag of Holding and a Teferi to draw me a bit deeper, and then Clarion as early interaction. So we should be able to draw a few extra cards and dig a bit deeper to try and find it. Mountain's okay, since we do need to land for eventually, but I'll be a bit greedy and bottom it here. Turn 1 Swamp into Falmar Knights, just as a 1-1 death touch. Fair enough. I guess I'll play the temple first. And then play the bag. So I don't have double blue at the moment, so if I draw a Drawn from Dreams, I won't be able to cast it. Temple of Silence, so this could be Black-White Knights, perhaps. I think instead of playing Teferi, I'm just gonna play Temple and activate the bag. Don't really want to bounce a knight in the first place, and if I plus, it could die to the Murderous Rider, so let's just play Temple first. Now I won't be able to play the draw from Dreams on turn 4, so I might want to bottom it and just dig towards a Fires of Invention. If I keep it, then I still need to find another blue source. Yeah, bottom it. And I'm not taking a ton of damage at the moment. Deafening Clarion can clean up the Falmar Knights and some other stuff too. That's okay. Do gotta watch out for a potential Anthem effect from the opponent giving their creatures plus one plus one, because then the Clarion's not gonna be enough to kill the Contender. And Midnight Reaper, also good reason to maybe fire off the Sweeper here. Alright, backup Clarion. So I could ditch a Clarion, I could ditch Sacred Foundry. Now let's get rid of Sacred Foundry. And this turn I'll just play Clarion. Not the best Clarion ever, but... We got rid of a Falmar Knight, and then, sure, the... Contender drew an extra card, but at the end of the day, still kind of a one and a half for one. Worthy Knight into Knight of Avon Legion. And again, I don't mind casting the Clarion here, since the Fairy doesn't line up great, and I don't want them drawing cards from the Midnight Reaper, so waiting on the Clarion is not necessarily great. And then I get to activate the bag as well. Probably activate bag first. 
maybe that changes my decision. And I don't think my opponent's playing discard spells. Alright, Bone Crusher Giants, that could change the equation a little bit. Because now I could also Giant kill Reaper and then cast a Clarion. So I'm probably getting rid of the planes. Could also just Bone Crusher Giant one of the knights in play. I think I'm just gonna play this tapped. And say go. See what my opponent does. And act accordingly. So our opponent's just going to end step, triggering the Knight of Amal Legion. So if that's their play, I'll stomp the Knight. And if they activate it in response, then I can just kill it with the Clarion next turn. So now the play is going to be Clarion plus Bag. And I guess I'll Bag first. Alright, now I can cast a Drawn from Dreams, one Kenrith can go. Alright, so opponents was definitely playing around the Sweeper there by not committing anything else to the board. Had they played a Midnight Reaper, I would have stomped the Reaper and then cast Clarion. Since they did nothing, I just decided to cash in my Sweeper to buy ourselves some extra time. Opponent doing nothing here, which is quite surprising. Not sure what their plan is. But uh, yeah, let's just cast a Drum from Dreams. And there's a Fires of Invention. Get another Drum from Dreams. I've got a Mana Sync with Kenrith, so I don't need to get the Castle Ventress there. And it's always close whether we should fetch first with the Fabled Passage before playing the Drawn from Dreams or afterwards, because now we're gonna like shuffle some of those cards back into our deck potentially. Alright, Paragon, maybe they have two of them, or just one. Alright, two Paragons, that's a decent play then. So that's six damage coming in. But uh, we will be able to Fires of Invention next turn. And a Midnight Reaper. Ooh, Swordmaster too, so... Drains me to five, so now... Could be in a bit of trouble. Alright, that solves my issues. Otherwise I could have gone Fires into Kenrith, but then I guess I wouldn't have had enough mana to gain life unless I drew a land. But yeah, definitely gonna keep the Giants, and I guess Teferi can go. I suppose that's how it was meant to Draw. Opponent will get to draw some cards here, but that's fine. So now the main thing we need to think about is Murderous Rider, and we don't want to have Kenrith murdered by it, basically, before we can maybe gain a bit of life. And then we just want to find a Fae of Wishes, which can find a, an extra finisher in case Kenrith doesn't get there. Their opponent is keeping up for mana, so they could have another Paragon, they could have a Murderous Rider here. So they're not making it easy. And backup Fires can definitely get discarded. So at the very least, if I play Kenrith, I can gain 10 life, which is pretty decent. Let's see what we can find with the Drawn from Dreams first. Find a Fae of Wishes and another Drawn from Dreams or Time Wipe. This one's close. The Fae can always find a Time Wipe, so I think I'll just get the Drawn from Dreams. 
and then play Kenrith. Fully expecting it to get uh, killed by a rider here, but I think I just need the life total that Kenrith provides. So I won't be giving Kenrith haste. Just happy to sit back. So there's a murderous rider. I'm gonna gain 10. And that should buy us plenty of time. Plays a Swordmaster. And another Midnight Reaper. Alright. I've got a lot of options now. I can fail of wishes for anything in my sideboard. Chandra comes to mind as a sweeper that will keep a Planeswalker in play afterwards. I could fail of wishes for shared summons first. And that can get me a second fail of wishes in Kenrith. But yeah, opponents scoops it up. They've seen enough. But you can kind of see how once we're in this spot, it's uh, very difficult to lose the game. Alright, we're on the draw. Double Fires of Invention in hand, plus a Fail of Wishes, so yeah, this is a definite keep. Facing Thornwood Falls, so this is likely some sort of uh, Golos Field of the Dead ramp deck, which is a pretty tough matchup since there's not a lot of great answers to Field of the Dead. So hopefully I can Fail of Wishes for a Unmoored Ego before my opponent uh, gets a field in play. Island maybe makes me think there's something else, not sure what. Not gonna just play the Fail of Wishes as a 1-4, I don't think. So I'll just play the castle. Give away the least amount of information. And the next turn I could play the ferry. Alright, so Brineborn can throw it. So they are just blue-green flash. So it's possible they don't have a Fabled Passage yet, which is why they're playing the Thornwood Falls. Otherwise I would definitely play the Passage over it. Opponent forgot to attack there. Well, if we can resolve the ferry, then we're in good shape, but... That's, of course, not very likely to happen. I think I'm just going to play Teferi here, make him use their counter spells. And gets quenched. And then next turn we can hope to resolve Fires of Invention. So yeah, against the blue-green flash deck, that's definitely one of our tougher matchups. Go to hope to be on the play and resolve a Teferi, pretty much. And we had a Teferi, but uh, we were on the draw. Although the Quench would have countered Teferi regardless. So yeah, just gonna make him have it here. Play the Fires, we've got a backup in case they do counter it. And I'll get a Planes in case we need to hard cast Time Wipe. It does get Quenched as well. So going back to our turn 2 decision, if we knew we were up against blue-green flash, there's more arguments for just playing out the Fail of Wishes as a 1-4 blocker, since it can potentially stop a Sailor from attacking in the Cutthroat for a couple turns. Missing our land drops also not great if we need to try and cast this Time Wipe. Alright, see if they have a third counter spell here. Alright, that resolves. So if my opponent has a Night Pack Ambusher, there's nothing in my hand that's prevents me from dying, other than playing the Fae of Wishes as a 1-4 blocker. That would have to chump, which isn't pretty, but that might still be okay, because then I can next turn Drawn from Dreams, find a land, cast Time Wipe. So if that's the only play that keeps me alive, I think I should just play this as a creature. Alright, that resolves. Let's see if they have the Ambusher. Alright, they're just going to activate the Spectral Sailor. Fair enough. And unsummon to bounce the Fae of Wishes. Well, at the very least, we're not dead yet. Just going to take 7. And then hope to resolve some uh, Sweepers here. But of course, at 2 life, our opponent can at any point flash in a creature to uh, kill us. Could also go with double Clarion. Is that better than a Drawn from Dreams? plus a Time Wipe. I guess what I can do is Time Wipe, and if it resolves, replay the Fae of Wishes in case of a Night Pack Ambusher or another Cutthroat. Probably makes the most sense. I 
I can pay for a quench now, so quench not too effective once there's a Fires of Invention in play. Opponent does have the Thrilled Mystic, sadly. So I can clear in away two of their creatures, but that's not enough. I can play a Chomper for the Cutthroat, but I'm, I'm still taking four. So yeah, that's gonna be the game. Gotta be careful with Deafening Clarion, since you first gotta cast it for zero mana, and then you gotta select the modes. Don't wanna accidentally pay three mana for your Deafening Clarion. That would be silly. Alright, GG's. Opponent did miss an attack for two, so if they didn't miss that, then we would have died a turn sooner. But yeah, they had the right counter spells at the right time, and without a Teferi in play, I don't think the matchup really favors us to begin with. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, the sand's close to perfect, so I'm keeping. Basically, any hand with some play before turn 4, a Fires of Invention and a Fae of Wishes is close to perfect, so the bar isn't very high. And then we already have a Mana Sink with Castle Ventress. Alright, Monorad, so I'm gonna want to find a Deafening Clarion as soon as possible. And land 4 would not hurt either. Now the Fairy or Hallowed Fountain is the decision. I could have also decided to just play the Fae of Wishes as a blocker. Would have been reasonable, although I was kind of light on action if I do play the Fae of Wishes as a creature. But maybe given the time wipe that would have been reasonable, so maybe I should have given that some more thought. I think I'm just taking the lands, I just don't want to miss my land drops. And then we'll figure it out. Steamkin, take two. Alright, well, that's a pretty good draw. Not gonna mess around, just gonna cast it now. Next turn we get to go fires into Fae of Wishes. And this might be one of those rare spots where I wanna search up a land. Because I do want land five. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for it here. Get my Overgrown Tomb. And then next turn, at the very least, I get to Time Wipe. Or I get to go Fae of Wishes for Shared Summons. Double Steamkin, so yeah. Don't think I want to let my opponent on top with those two. Cast a Time Wipe and Fae of Wishes. I could also play the Fae of Wishes, pick it back up with the Time Wipe, but I think I want to be more efficient here and get my Shared Summons now. So next turn I can cast a Shared Summons and play Kenrith and start gaining life right away. And we even have the Overgrown Tomb in place, so that could be pretty exciting. Uh, letting me reanimate some creatures or distribute some plus one plus one counters. Double Robber of the Rich. Does not draw the opponent any extra cards, luckily. Let's get Kenrith. And then I guess I could also get... Round Cloak Giant to deal with the two, two twos here. Not sure if that's necessary. Probably just get another Fae of Wishes instead. Play Kenrith, and then... Probably don't need land 7. And I'm not gonna attack with Kenrith here, since I just wanna play defense, make sure I don't die. And then we should be okay. Dwarven Mine makes a Dwarf token. And Torbran. Alright, that's scary. So now the robbers potentially deal 4 damage. But my opponent concedes, because they read all the abilities on Kenrith, and how can they possibly beat that? Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent opening hand. Just need to make sure we keep hitting our land drops. And Temple of Triumph, a great pickup here, so we'll just play that for now. Facing a turn one breeding pool. Yeah, I think I'll keep the Sacred Foundry, just want to make sure I have at least four lands. 
to uh, make things go smoothly. All right, forest go. So this is looking more and more like Simic Flash. So I could just play the Fae of Wishes as a 1-4 blocker. But I guess since we've got the Bone Crusher Giant, I can just keep that up instead. And potentially shock an end of turn creature. All right, opponent goes with the Once Upon a Time now. Still free. Finds a forest. All right, never mind. I guess it's not blue-green flash. It's some sort of green stompy deck. And Yorvo. Important to note about Yorvo is that it is a giant, so it doesn't die to our sweep effect in giant form. I think I'm okay just shocking my opponent. I'm going to be tapping out for the next couple turns, and I might want my Bone Crusher Giant in uh, exile on an adventure, so I can maybe get it back later and give it haste with Genrith. And then for now we'll just play the fairy, bounce Yorvo. And we've got pretty much the ideal draw here. Early interaction, followed by fires into Fey of Wishes, probably getting a shared summons. And shared summons can get a second Fey and Kendrith. So despite the Fey not letting you search creatures, the shared summons kind of gets around it. It's just a fetch up. I guess another island. Play fires and wish for the shared summons. I've got time. All right, and this is a good one. So the second phase of wishes is somewhat likely to get a casualties of war, which can clean up the Nissa as well as a creature and a land. Bone Crusher Giants. So let's play this untapped. Get Kenrith and Fey. And I can play Kenrith right now. And I think I'm okay giving it haste and attacking Nissa. And maybe it's better to keep him on defense actually. Since Nissa taking five doesn't matter a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. Nah. This is reasonable too. Do not assume I am fragile. I suppose I will still need a six land if I want to fail wishes for casualties of war. So unless I'm about to take lethal damage, I guess I can maybe afford to draw a card first. Uh, it's going to be a big fat Hydroid Crisis for 8. That's fine. So we're only taking 6. So can I afford to draw a card? I think I should probably still draw a card here since finding a land 6 is pretty important. And then I can potentially gain 10 life with Kenrith next turn. Fires and a land. Alright, perfect. So let's fail of Wishes. Is Casualties of War still the best I can get here? Because I could also get removal for Krasis and then Kenrith can finish off Nyssa by himself. But killing a land as well is kind of nice. Can always blow up the entire world with a planar cleansing, but that doesn't destroy the creature lands. So that seems kind of poor. Yeah, casualty seems fine. Chandra not the best since it doesn't kill the elemental lands. So creature, land, planeswalker. Creature, land, and planeswalker. And then I'll probably keep Kenrith on defense now. And then I have the option of drawing a card or gaining 10 life. Probably gonna need to gain 10 since Yorvo is lethal by himself. And then I will need to draw some more action since 
I currently don't have another Fae of Wishes in hand or a Drawn from Dreams. I can always play the Fae of Wishes and pick it back up and have Shimmer to dig me a bit deeper. Alright, Oko can transform Kenrith. But if I find a Time Wipe, I can pick him back up and then I'll be a normal human again. So, let's gain some life. Let's broaden your existence. Now if they attack with a forest, I'm probably still okay trading, since opponent is kind of stuck on lands a little bit now that Nissa's gone. And I don't have a time wipe in hand currently. Yeah, sure. Also got to keep in mind that if Oko turns Yorvo into an elk, it's still going to have... 6 plus 1 plus 1 counters, so it would be a 9-9. Nine, nine. So that combined with maybe a Nissa could kill me. So definitely got to keep that in mind. So I don't think I can spend my turn playing Fae of Wishes, bouncing it and then wishing for something. I guess I could just play it as a chum blocker, chump Yorvo, and then bounce it back to my hand, and then still cast something else. And what should that be? Probably Shimmer still. Alright, Chandra can kill Yorvo as a one for one. Is that good enough? Or I can get a drawn from dreams. Eh, I guess Chandra's fine. And then just kill Yorvo. And I can probably afford to play one land more here. Because if I need to discard to the Fae of Wishes, I don't mind discarding the second Fires of Invention. Or the Bone Crusher Giant. So I could Deafening Clarion, my opponent does get to save the wolf by sacking the food. So that's not too useful. So I'll probably Shimmer again. Find Fae of Wishes, Time Wipe, Teferi. Probably get the Fae of Wishes. And then the plan this turn is going to be to cast Fae of Wishes, bounce it back to my hand, and then I'll have two Fae of Wishes to find me stuff. And I'll keep land in hand now to discard to the ability. It's gonna be a questing beast, alright. Can block that one. Oko makes a food. One bite, and all your cares are gone. And bounce a fail of wishes. Discarding steam vents and fires. So the Leafkin Druid makes it so getting Liliana and minusing isn't all that appealing. So I'm not sure what the next best card is. Could get a plain white celebration to gain a ton of life. Opponent plays second Oko to make Extra food for the wolf. You must be Getting a planar cleansing doesn't do it since my opponent can make the wolf into a 6-6. Six, six. I guess we'll find out here. So time wipe. It leaves me dead on board. Ugin can make a chum blocker, but I don't think that's gonna cut it. Don't have enough life for command to be amazing. Could get a Kenrith back and then Kenrith can gain me. 10 life. So does Plain White Celebration do it? I can gain, let's say, 8 life and then return Kenrith plus maybe Chandra. That sounds probably like the best option. So I'm gonna return Kenrith, Chandra, and that's it, I think. And then 8 life should keep me alive.
And I'm incentivized to play out the temple. So if I draw one more land, I can triple activate Kenrith potentially. So I think I'm actually keeping a land on top. Although gaining life is not really good enough in the face of Oko since I just turned Kenrith into an elk again. But then I can fail wishes for time wipe and pick it back up. So it's probably worth it still. But yeah, the combination of Wicked Wolf and Oko is definitely pretty annoying. Nissa plus Oko turns something into an elk. So it's possible I should have gained four more life and only gotten back Kenrith instead of Chandra. But I feel like I also need to start pulling ahead somehow. And if I keep playing around everything, then they're eventually just going to win with what they have in play. So definitely a close, interesting game. If I was able to just get Liliana and make my opponent sacrifice both creatures, we would have been pretty far ahead. It's going to be Hydroid Crisis for six. So I'm definitely going to play Kenrith this turn. And then I could wish for, let's say, Time Wipe right now. So next turn I can Time Wipe and pick up my Kenrith again and replay Kenrith. Or I could play Chandra, so how much damage am I taking? I can gain 15, so I can go up to 19 life. 10, 14. It's definitely cutting it close if my opponent has a Nissa, but... I think that's what I'm doing. Get the time wipe now so I can make sure I can replay Kenrith. And say go. They're gonna turn a food token into an elk instead. <laughs> Surely you see the humor here. Attack with all. So the wolf is potentially 6 damage, 10, 16. And I can gain 15, so I think I'm safe blocking the elk here. If my opponent hadn't used Oko yet, I should be very careful because then Kenrith with 3 damage can be turned into an Elk and still die because it will have 3 damage marked on it. So I guess if they have yet another Oko, they could do that. Or a Voracious Hydra, I guess that'll do the trick. This Wicked Wolf is kind of our main problem. So I can cast Time Wipe. And then play Fae of Wishes as a chum blocker for the wolf and pick it back up. But there's a lot of things that kill me. Also, if Oko turns the Fae of Wishes into an elk, I'll be forced to let that happen because I can't afford to bounce it and die to the wolf. Alright, opponent exchanges control of the food token and the Fae of Wishes. So I can still gain 3 life from the food token. So now the question is if I bounce the Fae, do I still gain control of the food? I don't think I get to keep the food if I bounce the Fae of Wishes here. If memory serves. So I don't think I can afford to bounce it. But I'm probably dead if that's the case. So I think I'll risk it here. Alright, we timed out, so I wasn't able to test my theory. And apparently I didn't get priority to sack the food because I timed out. Well, that's unfortunate. So, we weren't dead on board because I could sack the food and at least get another turn. But I'm pretty sure that if I did bounce a fairy back to my hand, 
then uh, I wouldn't have gained control of the food. And if I don't gain control of the food, of course, I'm just dead to the wolf. So yeah, very interesting game. Lots of back and forth. Kind of goes to show that uh, the decisions with the fail wishes are by no means trivial. But uh, yeah, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play. And yeah, we've got the Fires of Invention in our opening hand. No real card draw effect, so that's the thing this hand is lacking, but still got to keep. And I could just Fable Passage for a Mountain, since I have these Bone Crusher Giants I can cast in the early turns too. Facing turn 1 Dismal Backwater, so some sort of blue-black, presumably Grixis or Esper. Alright, Shimmer's a good pickup. Uh, I think I would rather cast a Shimmer than shock my opponent potentially. And yeah, probably just need to land. Fail of Wishes would be the next best card here to go with my Fires of Invention, but it's pretty important that I hit my land drops. Maybe it's worth a gamble since I have more lands than card draw effects in my deck. Alright, I'll try it. We could also get Thought or shirt, in which case I want just more action in general. It's going to be a tap, Blood Crypt and a land, so we got rewarded for our greedy play. I could just cast the Giants just to put a bit of pressure in play, I don't hate that. That way my opponents can't uh, just play Planeswalker and get multiple activations out of it. And makes it more likely that the Fires of Invention gets to stick. Alright, Narset, perfect example. Now I get to attack Narset while doing the Fires of Invention thing. The Devil, that's fine. And a land, land 5 is good. So now I can Fail Fishes for the Shared Summons. And then set that up for next turn. And then next turn I could share summons for Kenrith, play Kenrith, although of course our opponent does have a Bedevil in hand. So we might play differently where we just use a second Fae of Wishes first. Opponent's gonna Thought Erasure my shared summons. That's too bad. But that's okay since we've got plenty of card effects in the deck and I'll also get to Scry 2 with the castle now as a nice mana sink, so I'll make sure to put a stop on upkeep as well. Alright, so we'll attack for four. And then I could just shock my opponent, play Giant, I could play the Fae of Wishes to then pick it back up to wish for something else. It's a pretty slow process, so the added pressure from the Giants might be better here. Yeah, let's do that. Shock. Play Giants. And then I'll play the Sacred Foundry, which my opponent knows about. And then I can activate Castle Ventress end of turn and on upkeep as well if I want to. And of course the Grixis Colors are going to struggle to deal with Fires of Invention. Put on stock on 3. And our opponent scoops it up just too far behind, stuck on 3 lands. Against an active Fires of Invention with Castle providing card selection. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. We've got the Fires plus even a Drawn from Dreams to cast on turn 4. And then the Shimmer can find whatever I need. If I'm up against a creature deck, I can maybe find a Sweeper. And yeah, Pelt Collector, so green Stompy here. And, well, Time Wipe is probably the best pickup. As a, a nice Sweeper that can even get some pretty large creatures, so... As long as I don't die before turn 5, I should be in good shape. So it's Gruul. And a turn to Paradise Druid. So, cards I want to find with Shimmer. I guess now with Teferi, I don't need to find that anymore. A land would be fine, a Deafening Clarion could be fine. Alright, Deafening Clarion it is. Gruul Spellbreaker, hopefully with haste. Alright, as a 4-4. So that's not going to die to the Clarion. 
but I'm still quite happy to cast it because my opponent's missing land drops. And then we can maybe bounce the Spellbreaker and eventually get it with the Time Wipe. So I can go Fires into Teferi. Fetch up the planes in case I do somehow deal with the Fires of Invention. I want to be able to cast my Time Wipe. And what I need to find with my Drawn From Dreams. Probably Kenrith is a card I want to find the most. And maybe a Fae of Wishes. Opponent found a Paradise Ruid. Let's see if they go after Teferi. Or not. Just going face. Makes sense. Alright, Fae of Wishes isn't bad. So I've got some options. Just killing the Pelt Collector and casting the Bone Crusher Giants would be fine. I could Fay of Wishes for Shared Summons and then cast the Time Wipe as well. Yeah, I guess that's reasonable. So I don't need five lands untapped right now. Salt Time Wipe. And then search up Shared Summons, which can find Kenrith, which can gain me life. And do some other neat things. Bone Crusher Giant kills the fairy. That's fine. Alright, it's time for Kenrith to shine. Kenrith and Fae. Play Kenny. And I actually don't hate attacking here. Start applying a bit of pressure. And then I always have the life gain ability in case my opponent uh, is about to kill me. Otherwise I can start drawing cards. Opponent finally finds the third land, but it might be too little too late. It's gonna be a 4-4 Spellbreaker. I think I can afford to draw a card here, it's a bit more mana efficient than gaining 5. And I want to shuffle first. I did put some pretty decent cards on the bottom earlier. So I don't mind shuffling first. And I guess get an island. So Kenrath can gain 10 life. What else do I want to do this turn? Probably Fae of Wishes for something. And what is that something? Could be Chandra. I guess this is a little bit mean, but I guess Casualties is pretty good here. Creature and land. And then attack for 5. And my opponent concedes. Alright, not bad, not bad. So yeah, the deck is quite a lot of fun to play, and there's a ton of customization options when it comes to the sideboard with the Fae of Wishes and which cards you can search up. So a lot of games tend to play out differently based on what you search up with the Fae of Wishes, which uh, keeps the deck interesting even after playing it for a while. And then of course Kenrith has been the all-star in the deck and a great mana sink to be able to use all your mana after you get the Fire's Invention in play. And hopefully the games were able to showcase that as well. Shared summons by far the card I get the most often out of the sideboard right away. And it's mostly just because I can find Kenrith and start using the abilities. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.